Hello and welcome to the second video of my channel. I'm Commander Darokan and today I'm going to be teaching you how to stop time. So, the reason we're able to do this at all is, why don't I just demonstrate? Uh, we can actually take away the AI of any entity. So, slash execute as at E, run data merge entity at S, no AI. One. Alright, so if you're going to want to follow along, you need to make sure, well, right now I'm just demonstrating, but we will use this command later. Anyway, uh, why don't I explain how everything works. So, slash execute, as you may or may not know, is a command that basically runs commands, which doesn't sound entirely useful on its own, but you can use it to run commands as other entities, so you basically make it so that that entity is the one who's running the command. You can run it at entities, so that uh, whatever you're doing happens at their location. Uh, you can you can do tons of useful things with slash, slash execute. Anyway, we're running it as all entities. So, the command we're actually running is uh, the data command, which you can use to change uh, certain types of data, such as AI or uh, noise, things like that. So we're data merge. I'm not sure exactly why we use the word merge, but that's just the word we use. So entity at s at s says the entity that we selected as running the command is going to be doing this to themselves that's the entity we selected and sorry that wasn't a great explanation the entity we selected earlier with at e which is everybody is going to be running the command data on themselves so they're going to be changing their own data individually okay i think that's a pretty good explanation anyway once you enter Everything is frozen in place, except for the newly spawned mobs. But anyway, uh, as you can see, AI affects movement, it affects gravity, affects basically everything that has to do with movement for a mob. Now, we gotta make sure that this is constant whenever we want it to happen, so what we're first wanna get, uh, we're, what, sorry. What we're first gonna wanna do is make a triggering mechanism, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a scoreboard, slash scoreboard objectives add, well, let's call it time, and why don't we do, uh, why don't we do dropping a clock on the ground, uh, so, minecraft dot dropped, oh, whoops, minecraft dot clock, and obviously it's a clock, because, you know, time, that's kind of, in, in, in the self-descriptive. Alright, so now let's set that to the, uh, the sidebar. Objective set to, play, set to display sidebar, time. So what scoreboards actually do is they track specific, uh, specific uh, parameters, such as dropping a clock. Uh, you could basically do it for any item, like a netherite pickaxe, for example. Uh, but right now we're going to do it for a clock. And it'd be, it'd be nice if we could do it for when you right-click with a clock, but when we're just using simple commands that are uh, easy for anybody to understand, then we really can't do much of right-click detection. All right, so now we have the we have the trigger we need. Sorry, but now we need to actually use it for something. So we'll do slash execute if entity at e scores equals time equals one. So that's saying it'll run the command if there's an entity that has a score of time of 1. Then we'll run the command, and we'll do that one command earlier. But we'll do as. We have to make sure it's executing as at E. We'll run data merge entity at S. N sorry, no AI. 1. Alright, actually, let's make sure that's always active. Uh, always active and on repeat. So now, let's just game rule command book output false. So that we don't have all that annoying text flashing across our screen constantly. So as you can see, even newly spawned entities will not have any AI. But, you may notice that they're still making noise. So, what we're going to do to make sure that doesn't happen is we're just going to change this one, silent1, that way they won't even make any noise. Uh, 
So, you may notice the chicken is still flapping its wings, and if I were to summon a bat, it would also be doing that. Um, unfortunately, there is not much I can do about that. That's an animation, it's built into the game. I can't really change it with, uh, with commands. So, it's not, it's not too much of a, too much of a downfall, I don't think. It's not too big of a problem. But, there is another thing. You'll be able to shoot arrows and such. Whoop. I used to have a quick charge. Uh, which, once again, I'm not sure is a huge problem. Because it's kind of like you're the only one who can interact with this world. Everyone else is frozen, but you can do whatever you want. There are a couple things we can do to make sure that uh, projectiles didn't fly. But it's easier this way, and it kind of is a little bit more immersive, too. One final thing we can't do much about is this. We really can't stop that from flowing. But, other than those couple of things, it's a pretty complete experience, and we need to uh, work on making sure we can actually turn it back. So let's basically just get the reverse of this. So once the score of time is 2, which means we've dropped a clock twice, so every other time we drop it, it'll toggle, we'll do silent 0. So that means it'll set it back and make it unsilent. So that is also, uh, this command will say when there's a time of two. No, a, uh, whoops, that's not, AI, zero. By the way, if you're wondering how I'm duplicating these command blocks, um, you can hold control and click on the scroll wheel to uh, grab the NB, an, an item with the NBT of the block you just looked at. So like, if you filled a chest, uh, let's grab that with uh, mushroom stems as the first object I grabbed. And then you hold control and then middle clicked with the scroll wheel. You'll have a chest that's filled with that stuff. So it's really useful for command blocks if you need a copy and you, all you need to do is change one simple thing. Alright, so uh, we'll need a clock. As you can see, Look at that, everything came back to life. So, now what we're actually going to want to make sure we do is we reset it. So that we can ha we can uh, go back to 1. Because when we throw it again, it'll be back on 3, and then we can't really do much about that. So, let's grab a copy of this and place it in front of this one. In this direction, make sure this arrow is pointing toward this block. Make it a chain. And then we're going to need one more command block. We'll do slash score. Whoop. Scoreboard players reset at E and we'll do time. And looks like there you go. So we have to make this conditional. Alright, so alright, there we go. And that's about it. Um, there's a couple more things we can do, like you might notice the sun is still going down, so why don't we do that real quick. Wait. So, we're gonna do, we're gonna run the command game rule, Whoop, because uh, the sun going up and down, the daylight cycle is, uh, is dictated by the rule, do daylight cycle. We'll do that to false. And, also fire will spread. Let's make sure that's... Yeah, it doesn't look like the sun's going around. Also, fire will spread and crops will grow, so there's two other game rules we can change for that. Uh, do fire tick. Whoops, sorry, we need to put a false at the end of that. False. And one more. Random tick speed. That'll be zero. Alright, so now, with all of those... Basically, there isn't much that can happen. Like I said, water can spread, animations can play, and uh, you can shoot arrows, but those aren't big problems. And now we just gotta make sure those are set back uh, when we actually have a score of 2. So, let's grab this. We'll have a score of 2 right now, and everything will go back except the sun won't be moving around again, and crops won't grow, and fire won't spread. So let's grab the end one. This has to be on the end. And we'll put it... Uh, two forward, so we have room for these two, and we'll just reverse them. 
Uh, did we only add two? We added three, didn't we? There we go. So make sure it's three past the most recent one. Make these both uh, chain. We don't need it to be conditional. Chain. And then... Um, actually, I'm not sure which two these are. So let me just grab these last three real quick again. And set them up. Alright. Ah, sorry. Alright, so now we just have to make them the inverse. Alright. Time equals two. Daylight cycle is false. Wait, nope, sorry. Sorry. True. There we go. Uh, do fire tickle be true when the time score is two? Uh, random tick speed. I think the default is three, but you might need to correct me on that. And when this time score is two. And that should be all. Look at that, it's going again. So let's grab our ah, clock. Freeze. Unfreeze. And there you have it. Just these few simple commands, and you can basically stop time entirely. Uh, do what you want with this, and enjoy.